All right, we're done. It's 10 o'clock and there were two of us and my kids came and helped a little. 28 chickens. Um, a good setup, a plucker. So there are things that I learned that I wanna share because that's my jam. First of all, I am covered in blood, just like a butcher, special times. Um, I think I'm not going to give anybody any numbers yet because I need to exactly weigh every chicken. But my chickens were about five pounds a piece. So they look like the really huge, um, the really huge uh, roasters that you buy, like the uh, rotisserie chicken at Costco. They look that big. Like the breasts on them are huge, the legs are big, that whole thing. So very cool, very cool. I'm satisfied with all of that. Things I learned, things I learned. Number one, um, this is gonna be about killing a chicken. So if you don't wanna hear that, this is not for you. Um, number one thing I learned was that breaking the neck of a chicken with my hands is really hard whenever it's these huge fat chickens. So I used a process where I put, I sat them on the ground. I put a pole over their neck and held it down with my two feet and then pulled their legs up to break their necks. I didn't really get the whole killing cone thing. I watched lots of stuff, I read lots of stuff, but um, even though that's my preferred way to slaughter, I would have a setup of killing cones because right after that, I was pulling the heads all the way off, but that left a jagged piece of skin. So right after, what I started doing was pop the neck, leave the head on, cut it off because you know that, you know, it dies immediately. It's moving, but it's dead cut the head off and then put it upside down in the chicken killing cone. I have to giggle whenever I watch the thing and the guy was awesome. It's just, he called the killing cone a hugging cone. So I feel like that there's a little bit of, um, I got a little bit of rose colored glasses um, advice from the YouTube videos that I watched because in actuality, um, some of my chickens broke their wings, um, flopping around, not in a cone. I understand the cone now for the sake of, um, it's dead, but it still has n nervous flapping, like the nerves are still going. And so I had a couple of chickens with broken wings from the flapping on the ground. So my ultimate way process that I figured out, cause I was learning the entire time, was, you know, break its neck under the stick put it in the cone, cut the head off, and let the blood drain. Rebecca won't get off the stud ladder. The girl's trying to use it. She says she wants to eat on it. <laughs> no, put away the step ladder. Mom. I'm just going to go with reality here. I'm not going to start this video over. It is what it is. I have four kids. Um, I also would have taken, I started at 5.30. We finished at almost 9.30, 9.15, 9.02, that's something like that. And then we've cleaned up, so we were done by 10, completely done by 10. A couple of things. I live in South Louisiana, or in Louisiana in general, and you can see how red I am. We stayed in the shade of my garage the entire time, except for when I was slaughtering out in the yard. And um, if I were to do this again, I would probably do it in April and wait to do it again in late October where the mornings are really cool because I started at 5.30 in the morning because it's so unbelievably hot. It is. Um, as far as gutting the chickens and um, all of that, that was really simple. I miscalculated on how much ice I would need. So my wonderful father-in-law came to the rescue and brought me some ice chests with ice because I've read enough to really feel that the cold water bath after you slaughter is really important so that rigor mortis um, releases in the body of the chicken and you have tender meat. Because if I had to soup all of this meat, I would be very disappointed, so. Overall, I don't have numbers yet, but overall, my overall experience was this is bloodier, guttier than I thought. Have a five gallon bucket, it was halfway full of chicken heads and guts the hearts, the livers, the feet, I kept. I didn't keep the gizzards because I didn't want to clean them. Um, 
That sounds like naughty to some people, but hey, I'm just giving you a dose of reality here. So um, it wasn't hard for me to slaughter the chickens. I made a video saying what I think and that I was nervous and probably four chickens in, I was like, I know exactly what I'm doing. And I felt very confident that none of the chickens were suffering, that this was the most humane way. And um, so yeah, I, overall, I think I have about 130 pounds of meat and it was worth this work. But I wanna say that I wasn't gonna have a plucker. This nice lady named Donna Clyde let me borrow her plucker. And I would still be plucking chickens all day if I did not have that plucker. I could pluck three chickens in the plucker at one time in like not even two minutes. So that cut down the work big time. Once they were slaughtered, scalded, plucked, on the table, I can gut the chicken and all of that in just a matter of minutes. So this is my experience, my very first experience with Cornish Cross. Um, I feel satisfied. My experience isn't over though, because these guys have to go from water bath at about 40 degrees to my refrigerator, or they could water bath for a couple of days, and then into some shrink wrap um, bags that I have that kind of shrink up around the chicken, the way you would buy a whole chicken in the store. So I guess <laughs> that's it. Uh, my daughters had no problem watching me slaughter chickens. Rebecca is my littlest and she was like, I'll slaughter a chicken mama. So <laughs> you never know what your kids are gonna say. I didn't shield my kids from it. Um, all of my daughters helped to gut chickens. My oldest daughter, Rachel, did loads of scalding and plucking, scalding and plucking. So it was really neat to include all of them in that process. And all of this is happening while my husband's at work. He popped in a couple of times and was like, I'm impressed. So gotta love impressing the man of your dreams. <laughs> anyway, um, I guess if you have any questions, you can drop them in the comments, but I hope this has been helpful and gives a dose of reality. Um, I think my number one takeaway is I need killing cones and my second takeaway is um i need well i need killing cones so they don't break their limbs and my second takeaway is do this when it's cooler because the flies are something fierce so we had a fan blowing on us to keep the flies away and uh, i can't thank my sister enough thank you tanya you are a beast workhorse oh my goodness i would be doing this a lot longer today if you hadn't been here so anyway, you guys, I hope this was helpful. Bye.